It's party time! Carl and Damon here from Games, Brains and Headbang Life, GBHBL.com for sure. And it's They Made What into a TV series. Episode 20, Treasure of Piñata Madre and Beneath a Flock and a Hard Place. <laughs> Ed, April 21st, 2007. Segment 1, Treasure of Piñata Madre. Franklin, and Fergie and Paulie are surfing. So there we go. That's who our three for this episode are. Yep. It ends when he hit a treasure chest and we're excited to see that it is apparently the legendary treasure of the Piñata Madre Saltwater Taffy Factory. God, some of this times this so stuff is a mouthful. So random, man. Fergie and Paulie immediately try to break into it using like a drill and all that. But Franklin stops them. Hey, dudes, we shouldn't break into it. We should return it to the owner. He even reads an inscription that tells them, look, if you find this treasure chest return it to so and so on but it's done in kind of riddle form yeah, yeah. suggesting you've got to go on a long journey so they do struggling across the hot desert with a chest they start to get a drink start to get a drink from some badger schools uh which i thought was supposed to be a mirage at first but that's it's like, not yeah, for, no, that's what I thought, yeah but paulie gets annoyed when it seems as though they want to come with them he scares them off basically getting a bit protective after scaring them off he sort of strokes the chest in a way that I was genuinely shocked. Genuinely shocked. They did not have him stroke the chest and say, my precious. You know what? I feel like they missed a trick for that. I, I, I thought the exact same thing. And he I didn't. Could. I was like, yeah. why did you not do that? And what it's not... 2007. Yeah, well after oh, oh, yeah, the yeah, release yeah. of um, Lord of the Rings yeah, 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 yeah. and so on. But then like, you didn't even need to do it based on the films. Oh, you could no. piss off the, the books, the books and, the, the books, and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, absolutely. I, I'm generally shocked they missed that trick. Yep. I, I hope afterwards someone went, why the hell didn't we do that? And kick themselves. Perfect, yeah. But we do see Fergie narrow his eyes. Hmm. They carry on, eventually get into a row over the possibility that Fergie has got into the chest and helped himself to the taffy inside. This is an argument about it getting lighter. Would Franklin calm things down, remind him of their quest? Guys, when did he get into it? Previously he tried to open it and he couldn't. Mm -hmm. If he can just open it and eat some, exactly. you can open it and eat some. Do you see what I mean? Yep. Now, we see them in a cold and wintry landscape. Fergie needs to stop the pee. That's it. There's nothing here. That is all that happens in a wintry landscape. I, I was baffled. Yep. Uh, also, they pee. Okay. <laughs> then we're just in a jungle. We're just in a jungle. And Fergie and Paulie continue to argue, eventually getting into a fight. Franklin gets them to stop by showing them that the, the, the factory in the distance. Like, dudes, we're almost there. I can't even do it, frankly. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, however, once they see it, they continue to argue and now turn on Franklin, suggesting he has been eating a taffy. That's why he's so agreeable. Unknown to them, though, Pester. So Pester's been in a lot recently. He's back again. Three in a row, yeah. Watching, and he's able to grab the chest while I argue and accuse each other of eating stuff. Pester and the ruffians run off of it, pestering, wondering why the chest is so light as they do run. Uh, the piñatas momentarily put the issues behind them to give chase as the ruffians throw fruit at them to stop them. Uh, the ruffians are able to stop the piñatas who now start to argue again. Seeing Pester breaking into the box, they run and dive on him, knocking everyone off a cliff. Even on the fall, because it's a really long fall, they argue. And Franklin points out that they're agreeing though, like they're getting along because the arguments is the same. They're agreeing in their arguments yeah, basically. Yeah. And they agree, look, time to stop and let's save the treasure. Landing, rolling down the hill, Franklin uses a surfboard to get the chest and he stops in front of the factory, but everyone slams into him, knocking the chest into the arms of an employee. What's in the chest, Damon? Salt water. Yep. Just salt water, an ingredient for salt water taffy. But the reason why it's been so light is they've lost it all. When they jackhammered into it at the start, they created a little hole, and it's been slowly disappearing. And uh, yeah, that's it. And it ends with them agreeing to share the sweets they're given to prove what they learned. And I was like, is that it? Is that literally all we've got to end this episode? We couldn't come up with anything more clever than that. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Waste, of, waste of time running that episode. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think the sweets part makes sense. No. I think the, sh the lesson should have been Basically, through their arguments and not paying attention and silliness, they, they get nothing. They made yes. an entire journey. 
for nothing. But then they realise, okay, it was still a fun journey because, you know, we, we hung out together. But they, they, That's they, it. They're getting rewarded for their... Uselessness. Yeah, yeah, for doing yeah, nothing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Whew. Ooh, it's a hard slog. I'm glad up episode 20, folks. <laughs> it's a hard slog. And we've only got 26 to end season one. Uh, segment two, between a flock and a hard place. Tina and Teddy are struggling to sleep with the noise of goobars outside. One particular goobar, uh, Gordon has had enough of being told what to do by a bark bark. So basically a bark bark, bark barks, <laughs> barks basically. And it causes the goobars to be hypnotised into doing what he does. So it's a play on uh, a sheep herder. Yeah, yeah. Which I liked. Yeah, yeah, I liked. Yeah. Teddy, annoyed with the noise, keeps shouting at... Basically, opens the window and keeps shouting at insults. So basically, every time the bark bark gets them hypnotised, uh, Teddy shouts at an insult that knocks them out of, hip, out of their hypnotised state. And Gordon, basically, has had enough. Decides he's had enough and attacks the bark bark. Basically, he's rising up against his oppressor. Yep. And he leads the rest of the flock into rising up while swearing revenge on Teddy for all the insults. The next morning, Franklin discovers his garden has been destroyed. And the evidence points to Teddy, who, of course, swears innocence and is given benefit, given the benefit of doubt at this stage. Do you know what? They, 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 these pinyards are very really pissed off, man. Why? They're supposed to be fucking friends. Mm. And all they do is, every episode... They, they, they spend the entire time blaming each other. It's like, you know your friend wouldn't do it, so what are you blaming him for? I, I, I know, it's, uh, yeah. it's full of TV show. They have to do something. Uh, yeah, but uh, evidence, isn't it? It's I, that. I know, I know. <laughs> However, of course, the Goobas aren't finished. They continue to wreck gardens and leave evidence behind that suggests Teddy is to blame. It's enough to convince uh, Mabel that he is guilty and she goes after him. Teddy swears he's innocent, innocent. And during all of this, you might be wondering, where's Tina? She's the other half. She's basically doing a crossword. And a lot of the words always seem to describe the predicament yeah. they're in. I, I, that is quite clever. I, yeah. I, I, I like that, yeah. Yeah, I agree. That night, the Goobers break into their house, uh, into Tina and Teddy's house, and steal his night kit, nightcap. They then plan in Ella's garden after wrecking it. It looks like Teddy's cries of innocence are now falling in deaf ears as the piñatas bust in and see pumpkins all over the floor. Basically, pumpkins from Ella's garden. Teddy makes a run for it, dragging Tina behind as the rest of Pinata's chase. Hiding out at a hotel. Thought that was weird. Yep. Later, Teddy is distraught and can't get Tina's attention. He then sees the mob outside, so tries to pretend to be a busload of French schoolgirls. That is so <laughs> random. Uh, but it seems to work. Uh, but he doesn't know how to get out of this situation. The TV now turns on. And basically, it's an advert offering up a solution to his entire predicament. It's like, are you hiding out from a mom? Are you doing this? Are you yeah. doing that? But basically, he's like, oh, who are these ads for? Ignores it and turns it off. And instead, sees a different ad that's for something completely different. And he gets inspiration to stake out Chaw's Garden as it's the only one that's been untouched. He thinks he can prove mm. I thought that was excellently clever. Yeah, those sort of things are... Up. Very clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's silly, it's funny, it's nonsensical, and I'm, I'm game for yeah, that. Yeah. He arrives just in time to see the goobers attempting to wreck it. He cries out for the others to come, but in the time it takes for the mob to arrive, the goobers all disappear, and it just looks like Teddy was caught in the act. <laughs> he begs Tina to say something, but she wants a five-letter word for sandpaper, which is... Rough. Oh, yeah. And Teddy shouts it over and over again. And of course, that is the Bark Bark's word. Rough, rough. Um, I said Bark Bark earlier on. Yeah, it's rough, rough, yeah, not Bark Bark. Yeah, yeah. Rough, rough. rough yeah. Hypnotising the goobers to come out of their hiding place and reveal that he's innocent. You even see um, Gordon trying to deny the urge to listen, but he has no choice. Yeah. Everyone, though, kind of Teddy's like, I'm innocent. And everybody sort of half heartedly cheers. But then when Tina declares that a crossword is complete, everybody cheers really excitedly. <laughs> I think this episode's got more silly moments that are fun than anything else. Yeah, I mean, best best segment we've had for a while. So. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. The Bart Bart comes back, uh, having enjoyed his vacation, apparently, and takes the goobers away. The rest are then like, well, we've got all these torches and things, so let's not put them to waste. Which freaks Teddy out, thinking they're going to continue to chase him. He runs away, panicking, and so on. And they're just like, "We're just going to cook some s'mores 
and that's how it ends. Funny, it's very it's yeah. stupidly funny. Yeah. yeah, I think you nailed it there. I yeah. think this is the best segment we've seen in a while because it has a complete beginning to end story mm-hmm. that doesn't have like it plays out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfectly yeah. fine. But it embraces the nonsense in a better way than we've seen before. Mm-hmm. Really, really strong stuff, I think. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, and it, it uses a decent character, too. So mm. See, obviously, Teddy and Tina. Indeed, right. indeed, absolutely. So this was uh, a mix of two. Didn't really care for Treasure of Pinata Madre, but certainly enjoyed uh, Between a Flock and a Hard yeah. Place. More of this, please. We shall see. We're almost at the end of season one. Six more episodes till we close it out. This was episode number 20. Got any thoughts you know what to do? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at gbhbl.com, our full website, where reviews, news, and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.